Hello TrueTube, I'm Nicholas and welcome to Southwark Cathedral. A cathedral is a big church with a chief priest called a bishop at the head of it. He is in control of all, all the churches in the surrounding area. So we're entering through the west door, so come on in. Here we are at the west end, facing east. Um, this area where there are chairs is called the nave and that's where the congregation sit during a service. This here is called a font. It's a big bowl full of water and it is used for baptism. During baptism, a priest pours water on top of a baby's head to symbolise the welcoming into the Christian faith. Uh, it's put at the entrance of a church to symbolise the welcoming into the church as a baby has at its baptism. As I said, this is the nave. In the nave, where people sit, there are chairs. In some churches, there are pews, which are long wooden benches. Also, on the chairs are these cushions called hassocks, and they, these are used for kneeling on during the prayers. At the centre of the nave is also the place where the priest comes and reads from the Gospel of either Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. I'll just show you the votive candle station now. This is, as I said, um, called a votive candle station. Therefore, these are votive candles. A votive candle symbolises a prayer and people light a votive candle if they want to say a prayer for someone who's sick or someone they're worried about. If you look around the cathedral, you'll notice that a lot of the windows are stained glass windows. These windows portray images and scenes from saints or the Bible or important people from the history of this cathedral. If you follow me now, we're going to go to the centre of the church, which is, which is called the crossing. Here we are at the crossing, which in this church um, is known as tower space because it's beneath the tower. A church traditionally is built in the shape of a cross. We have the nave. We have the chancel. And we have the two transepts, the north and the south. Above us, as I said, we have the tower. In the tower are bells which are rung and were traditionally used to call Christians to church. This is called the pulpit and this is where the priest comes to preach to the church. The priest talk to the church is called a sermon. Here, the east end of the church is called the chancel. In these seats and these seats is where the priests sit. In most churches, they're called priests or vicars or pastors, but here we call them deans and canons. This part of the chancel is called the choir because it's where the choir sits. The choir is usually accompanied by the organ. Here is the organ loft where the organist sits. As you can see, the organ is a keyboard instrument and the sound comes out of huge pipes. This is the lectern. It is basically um, a big book stand. It's used to rest the Bible. Passages from the Bible are read by the clergy to, to the congregation from this point. Lecterns can also be situated at the front of the chancel by the crossing. The lectern is in the shape of an eagle, which is the symbol of St John the Evangelist, one of the Gospel writers from the four Gospels in the Bible. The eastmost part of the chancel is called the sanctuary. And it's separated from the chancel by an altar rail. 
As you can see up there, we have a, a, a window. The church faces east, and therefore in the morning, the sun comes through and lights up the church. That is a symbol of Jesus is the light of the world. Next, these statues, we have figures of people from the Bible and important people from the church, particularly Jesus up the, up the top in the gold and Mary just beneath him, also in gold. Below the statues, we have the high altar. On the altar, there is a cross. That is the symbol of Christianity, a cross that Jesus was crucified on. Either side of the cross, we have two candles and when lit during the service, they also symbolise Jesus is the light of the world. At the moment, in our church, we have a nativity scene. That's because it's near Christmas. And so we've got Mary and Jesus and Joseph and the three wise men and the shepherds. Let's get a closer look at the high altar. This is one of the most important parts of the church. It's called the altar. This church has two altars one in the tower space and one here in the sanctuary called the High Altar. This altar is used to place the, the sacrament, the bread and wine, and for it to be blessed by the priest before it being shared out among the congregation. The bread symbolises the body of Christ and the wine symbolises the blood of Christ. This is called Holy Communion. At most churches, the High Altar is the very front part of the church, but in this cathedral, we have some more chapels behind the high altar. Let's go and see them. In this area, we have a few chapels. A chapel is like a miniature church. As you can see, each chapel has got its own altar and it is a space for private prayer. Now we'll go to the south transept. Here we are in the south transept, which is right next to the crossing, or the uh, tower space. And then just beyond the, the tower space is the north transept. The transept can be used for extra seating space, as the north is, or for exhibitions like we have on at the moment. This south transept is also home to the organ pipe. As you may have noticed from walking around the church, there are various memorials dotted around the church. Um, this is a particularly impressive one um, of a poet laureate from the 15th century. This is actually a tomb. Well, thank you for coming to the cathedral today, Choo Tube, and uh, I'll show you out this way. Thank you for coming. Bye.